This is part 123 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to implement account lockout in ASP.NET Core. So, what is account lockout? Account lockout is locking, that is disabling the account after too many failed logon attempts. Most banks lock the account after 5 failed attempts. After how many failed attempts should the account be locked out depends on the lockout policy of the company. The number of failed attempts after which an account should be locked is configurable in ASP.NET Core. We'll see that in action in just a bit. But before that, let's understand why should we lock accounts. Account lockout is to prevent attackers from brute force attempts to guess a user's password. After a certain number of failed logon attempts, the account will be temporarily locked for a specified amount of time. How long the account should be locked is again configurable and we'll see this in action in just a bit. Let's say we lock the account for 15 minutes after 5 failed logon attempts. After 15 minutes, the user will get another 5 attempts to log on. After 5 failed attempts, the account will be locked for another 15 minutes. So this means it will take many years for an attacker to successfully crack the password. An organization may also have password change policy, meaning the password must be changed every one or two months. So account lockout policy combined with password change policy makes it extremely difficult for an attacker to brute force, that is guess, password and gain access. First, let's configure the account lockout options. We do this in configure services method of the startup class max failed access attempts. As the name implies, this is the property that specifies the number of failed logon attempts after which the account should be locked. The default is 5. We can change it if we want, but let's keep it at 5. Default lockout time span. This is the property that we use to specify how long the account should be locked. The default is 5 minutes, but let's bump it up to 15 minutes. We are in the configure services method of the startup class. Notice we are using password property to configure password options. Similarly, sign in property for sign in options, tokens for token options, and along the same lines, lockout for lockout options. Next, we need to enable account lockout functionality. For this, all we need to do is pass a value of true for this last Boolean parameter lockout on failure. And this is the method that we use, that is password sign in async to sign in a user using username and password. And this method is present in this built in ASP.NET Core service sign in manager. We use this service within the login action of our account controller to sign in a user. We already have the account controller open. So let's go to the login action. Notice we are using the sign in manager service password sign in async method here and from the IntelliSense you can see the last parameter is lockout on failure and at the moment we are passing a value of false. So let's change it to true to enable account lockout. With this change in place on every failed logon attempt, access failed count column value in ASP.NET users table will be increased by 1. Let's take a look at that table. Access failed count column is right here. So on every failed logon attempt, the value in this column is increased by 1. And when the count reaches the threshold that we have specified using max failed access attempts, the account will be locked. So in our example, when the failed logon attempts reaches 5, the account will be automatically locked. And to indicate that the account is locked, this column lockout end will be populated and this is a date time column and the date time here will be 15 minutes in the future and the reason for that is because we have specified the duration for which the account should be locked as 15 minutes so the lockout end date will be 15 minutes in the future when that time has elapsed the account will be automatically unlocked and the user will get another five attempts before the account is locked again Password sign in async method returns an object of type sign in result. Now, after the account is locked out, even if we provide the correct username and password, sign in result 
will not be succeeded. It will be locked out because we should not allow the user to log in even if we provide correct username and password if the account is locked out. So let's include another if block here. To check if the account is locked out, notice on this result variable, which is of type sign in result, we have is locked out boolean property. If the account is locked, we want to send the user to account locked view. We don't have this view yet, we'll create it now. We want the view to look like this. Your account is locked, please try again after some time or they can reset their password if they have forgotten it. And here is the HTML for that. This is straightforward. So when they click this link to reset the password, we want to send the user to forgot password action in the account controller. In the interest of time, I have already added this account locked view to the account folder because the name of the controller is account controller. This is the same HTML that we have seen on the slide. With all these changes in place, let's run our project and see what we have so far. We are on the login page. Let me provide an invalid password. Notice access failed count is now 1 because we have one failed logon attempt. But lockout end is still not populated. That's because we have not reached this threshold that we have set using this property. So when the count reaches 5, that's when the account will be locked and to indicate that lockout end column will be populated. So let's try a few more times. There we go. The account is locked and we are redirected to account locked view. And notice lockout end column now has a value. So for the duration, this account is locked. Even if we supply the correct username and password, we'll not be able to log in. We have two options at this point. Either wait for 15 minutes and then try again, or we can reset our password. Let's copy this password reset link from the log file and then paste it in the browser. Reset the password. Let's log in with our new password. Notice we have the same error. Your account is locked. That's because the daytime value that we have in this column, lockout end, is still in the future. That is, it has not elapsed. So for the duration, this account is locked. Even after we have reset the password, we'll not be able to log in. One way to overcome this issue is by setting the value in lockout end column to the current daytime. And to do that, we use the user manager service set lockout end date async method. Let's quickly implement this. We are in the reset password action of the account controller and this is the line that resets the user password. Upon successfully resetting the password and before sending the user to reset password confirmation view, check if the account is locked out and if it is, then set the lockout end date to current UTC date time. And let's fix this compilation error by bringing in the system namespace. Let's save our changes and take one final look at the browser. Let's reset the password again. Copy the password reset link and let's reset the password. Let's try and log in with the new password. There we go. We are successfully logged in. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.